All right, guys, welcome to Next Level Live. That, that, that doesn't get old, right? I like no, that. No. Um, feel bad. I just come in here and put that on, put the headphones on, <laughs> and feel like I'm being cheered for. It's outstanding. Um, we, uh, yeah, that that one's a little bit weird, but I, but I'm, I'll, I'll get used to it. And we're pi- are we? Is it true we're piping in Mark Mead's laugh at some point in time? We are. Yeah, okay. hopefully by next week. Because you can't like. <laughs> Like you can't like it's so good. Yeah, that's why I was like bringing the meetings early on when we started the company because nobody was there. But when right. he was there, he laughed. It'd be like five people, four more paying attention, and you'd say something remotely funny. Mark would laugh, and it's yeah. like you just felt good about yourself. Kept moving. Um, we're gonna switch it up a little bit this week, meaning we uh really getting crazy laser focused on building a business. When I say crazy laser focused on it, you know, the more research I do about you know two hundred plus million people above the age of 18, which means they can get an insurance license in America, 70 some odd percent with all these studies I read that are dissatisfied with their current job. You know, um, I think I was reading something the other day, 60 some odd percent people between the eight, ages of 18 and 30 have a full-time job and an additional job. Um, so you start looking at, you know, we have 7,000 agents and that's cool. I mean, we're happy and we want to, we want to change lives and, and for real, like we're, you're going to hear about from the guests about selling today and about lead stuff and I'm going to bring them on. But I really want to, Mike, we're going to switch this up a little bit because we don't, you were, we were doing some podcasts the other day and it's funny. Everybody did the same thing. Like, what do you, uh, so what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I'm probably life insurance, family first life. I mean, I don't <laughs> know, stuff like that. Well, what do you want me to do? Just sit in the chair. Put the microphone in front of you and answer the questions. Let's have a dialogue. Let's talk. I don't have anything prepared. I'm like, that makes two of us. I'm not prepared either. But it's what I do for a living and I enjoy it. So let's let's talk about it. I mean, like, you don't have to get me prepared to talk about my kids. Like, it's my life and they're on my heart. Like, this is my business. It's my life. It's my heart. I'm on it. So, so, <coughs> excuse me. But it's funny because everybody, okay, I'll just go, I guess we'll just go with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when's the last time you've seen us do something reading from notes? We don't do it that way. I always thought if you had to read from notes, it wasn't on your heart. I'm not saying there aren't things you want to write down, but I always kind of was like, you know, now if you want me to talk for two and a half hours and teach a subject and it's very, now again, I'm not a mathematical guy, you know, some kind of trainer that's going to be talking to you about, you know, physics and, and calculus. But I mean, just talking about what you do, it's what you do. And I think, I think about a lot about it all the time. So, you know, Mike, I, I wanted to, cause I was sitting here the other day kind of reflect. Now I do think a lot about what we're going to talk about. That's my preparation. I think a lot about it every week, but I just think I wanted to come and be as spontaneous as it can be. We met about 10 years ago. Yeah. 10 years ago. Okay. So for most people, because they don't know, because I think it's an important story. um, You want to tell, share with everybody how we got to meet. Cause I didn't, I, we didn't, I don't know you. I'm much older than you and your wife. I don't have the same friends or acquaintances you have. How did that all happen? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, my wife actually worked at a local bank. Um, and that's where she met you back when you were in real estate and, uh, your state, you know, working for the state or whatnot. Um, but when you got into life insurance, you know, you, you try to hire everyone around you. Um, and you try to hire my wife several times. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was pretty persistent about having no interest. Um, and, and, you know, at one point you actually, and I think she just, agreed. So she figured if, if I say yes, then he'll stop asking me. Um, there was like what we call now a business development meeting mm-hmm. going on. Um, and you invited her to go. So her, you invited her and one other teller. Um, I invited them all. Yeah. But her <laughs> well, and one two other of them agreed yeah. to go, you know, yeah. and she told me, and I, at the time I was in construction, 23 years old, you know, building houses, remodeling, kitchen, what, whatever, you know, whatever we could get. Um, and, and I had no interest, um, in life insurance or doing anything outside uh, of what I was doing. So, you know, she told me she was going, um, and when she got home from work that night, she said, well, you know, Sam canceled. Uh, I was like, okay, so I guess you're going by yourself. Right. <laughs> and then she's like, uh, she basically dragged me to this meeting, you know, begged me to go. Can you just go? I'm like, I'll go, but I have no interest in doing now, it. Keep, you know? keep in mind, she's only going. So I'll stop asking her. Exactly. Right. Like <laughs> yeah. she has no interest, but it's like, <laughs> right. I need him to stop asking me. Yep. And before I finish, before Mike finishes, I hadn't recruited anybody. Like I got my insurance license. People said you should build a team. And I'm like, sounds good. And I just went and sold. Right. I I, like, I think a lot of other people. And it was because I was, I was never a good recruiter. I'm just like, you know, I was saying this to a group the other day. I look at people like, like the first time I saw Grady do a meeting in Phoenix, I thought, man, he's different than me. Man, is he talented? Yeah. Like this man's desire to recruit the world 
is mind boggling. And then I realized his motivation was for them to actually improve their lives, not just about the dollars he would make because he was going to make money. Right. And this is obviously well after you know, we started paying for stuff. I didn't know Grady prior to that. But the funny thing about the bank, I didn't recruit everybody. Like, I recruited everybody in there. And the reason was they were treated so poorly by the people they worked for. Yeah. They were, they, I mean, cause I went there like all the time. A, I was always, I was in real estate, right? So I was always trying to move money. Right. I'm trying to pay <laughs> the painters for this. It wasn't like I wanted to, and I didn't do online banking. I don't even know what, why, but who knows? I just, and they, there were so many, but their local branch where I did most of my work. So I was always in there. So I always got to see them and the managers, were, they were just mean. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I'm like, I would never, I'd, I'd go get another job. I couldn't, so they were treated poorly. And then I would start asking them like, Hey, how, how much do you make an hour? And they would tell me, I'd be like, there's no way you make that an hour. They're like, yeah, they made nothing. Right. So I really kind of focused most of my energy on the bank. Honestly, yeah, yeah. there was five, six tellers, all your ages, you know, early twenties. I'm like, what are y'all doing here? And I didn't care. Manager could be there. Yeah. I'm like, why do you keep working here? I wouldn't work for him. I wouldn't work for her. <laughs> so that's why your wife decided to go. Right. Yeah. I also think that, you know, the fact that she had access to your accounts and knew what you made in real estate versus Because I had no money in real estate. I think that yeah. intrigued her a little bit, but mm -hmm. I'd say 90% of it was, hey, if I go to this meeting, Sean will stop asking me about it. Right. <laughs> At least I can say I went. So, you know, she dragged me to this meeting, and everyone in the meeting, it was probably 50 people, everyone in the meeting was wearing suits and ties. You know, I showed up in a T-shirt and shorts, um, and my wife was, you know, business dress, as I said, she, yeah. she wore to the bank. Um and I remember just sitting there, and, and you were actually the one who explained the business that night. And you said a few things that really hit me, and, and, I, and I'm, like, half paying attention. But you started talking, and you were telling a story about um, a client you met that her husband already passed away before you even got out there. And just the impact that I'll that never had on you that. Yeah. in this business. And you talked to— So I have to—real have to, quick. So I show up in this, this house. lady meets me in the driveway. She's bawling her eyes out. Okay. We have an appointment which she remembers. She thinks I'm with another insurance company. Yeah. An insurance agent had went out to her house about a week and a half prior. Husband, by the way, walked out of their house, went down the mailbox, had a heart attack, died in the driveway, 51 years old. According to her, healthy as a horse, heart attack, drops dead. She had filled out a form. The agent met with her and the husband. The agent tried to get the husband to do a full fully underwritten, blood work, urine, take it three, four, five, seven, 12 months if it gets issued and do that. They wanted mortgage protection. They had about $240,000 in the mortgage. That's all they wanted. He would have been eligible. Had I been the one that had gotten the lead when I did or called her, I would have written 250 grand. He, would, he was going to pass away. And then she would have been paid. The house would have been paid off. Okay. Right. So she's telling me a story and she's crying because she thinks I'm with that insurance company that did take an application. But of course, medicals aren't done. And of course, I know it's not going to pay. Right. And I'm literally sitting there thinking, I don't know what to say to her. I don't want to make her more upset. I'm not going to lie to her, but I know in my heart of hearts it's not going to pay. So I said, let's go inside, get me the card. I start digging around. I call the person. She And she had just because... The timing of it, she'd been a wreck for a week, hadn't like taken a, when she finally took a phone call, boom, I'm the one that called. She assumes you're with company X. Right. Okay. So when I explained that to her, she's like, oh, I thought you were. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. Right. So I said, let's, let's, but hey, let's make some phone calls. May, hey, hopefully I'm wrong. Right. I'm thinking, hopefully yeah. I'm wrong. Agent, very, very, um, uncompassionately, I mean, terrible, just very indifferently, I should say best. Like, yeah, um, is she there? Yep, she's crying, put her on the phone. Yeah, we we had not gotten that far along. There's no policy and no, there's, I'm sorry about your husband. Um, and the other thing I do, like thinking, yeah, you can go outside where you are and practice falling down. I'm about ready to go over and see you. Don't yeah. talk to people like that. Her <laughs> husband just died, right. you know? So here's this woman who's, you know, lost this man she loves, but... At this moment in time, what can she think about? She's not more, she's thinking, I, I can't afford any of this. He's working, she's not. And it changed my life because before that, I was just going out and I loved helping people, but I never, no, no nobody had died that I wrote or nobody had died before I met. I just was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to write people. They're going to get some return of premium. This is going to be cool. And every once in a while, somebody will die. And here this was, this 51 year old man, 12 miles from the office that dies. So I was telling that story. Yeah. 
and, and that's what hit me is, is it, you know, proved to me that you cared about people, you know, and that it, it intrigued me. And then you said a couple other things that, you know, really hit home with me. You, you mentioned, um, you talked about your family, your kids, I think, I mean, Savannah and Trevor, probably six and eight at the time, maybe. Um, actually, that's good. They were six and yeah. eight. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember you saying that, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to take care of my family. As long as it's legal and ethical. That's it. You said, it. I won't do anything that would put me in jail or yep. send me to hell. And right. I was like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I feel the same way. So I, I, I was intrigued. I was interested. And he talked about the pay, which, you know, you were talking about making 500 bucks a policy. And I'm like, that's a good week for me in Correct. pay right 40 now. 40 hours. Like, yeah. That, yeah, that's I'm working 40 hours. And, you know, we get the check on Friday because, you know, you're chasing contractors or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so I, I, I was intrigued. And by the end of the meeting, I remember meeting you. And I just asked you, um, I said, you know, can anyone do this? Because, you know, you invited my wife. I'm like, is it just for her? And you're like, no, anyone can do this. But you might have to get cleaned up a little bit. You know, the piercing in my eyebrow. And shorts. You know, shorts. On a business meeting. Yeah, business T-shirt. <laughs> So, um, and then from there, you know, I remember taking your business card and right after that, I mean, you know, business kind of picked up in construction. So I was busy and this was May of 09 and I, your card sat on my desk at home, you know, up, up until about September or, or August. And I remember August, um, you know, every, every job we were on kind of fell through. They couldn't get funding from the banks around the time the market crashed or whatnot. So, you know, obviously hit construction shortly after. Um, and I remember calling you. And saying, "Hey, I'm ready." You know, at first you didn't really recognize who I was. Although I did recognize, that's just a game I do. Like, <laughs> okay, I, I met you. I know your wife. I invited you to meet in shorts, t-shirt guy. I never calling back. I'm like, who is this again? Just a game. So right. yeah, okay. Well, now I know. Yep, now you know. I knew exactly who you were. <laughs> yep. So, um, you know, you sent me the license in class, and, and you know, um, it t- it took me about a week and a half to get licensed, and then uh, you know, I started rolling kind of part time. I was still you know dabbling in construction, but by December that year, you know, I was making more selling life insurance a couple of days a week than I was in construction. Um, so I quit that job, started full time, and then you know, 2010 was my first full year. Issued over 200 thousand um, in business and a year. Here's the thing, too. You know, it's funny how you work so hard for 10 years and we don't sit down. We never sat down and talk about this, right? People would say, can you bring me in the field? I'd be like, that's not going to teach you anything. I mean, I, if you need somebody to drive around with, but you're you, I'm me. Right. The things I'm going to say are different than things. You're going to say my experience are different. And by the way, I'm the one asking the questions. You're just watching. It's not going to teach you anything. If I say, hey, coach, I'm gonna be, I, I want to learn how to pitch. Okay, well, let's teach. And then, you gotta go, dude, you're going to learn everything when you're on the mound. Mm-hmm. And I'll be in the dugout. You'll be on the mound. I'll be in the dugout. I won't. You're going to have to figure it out. So, Mike, I want to get to know you a little bit better. Right. And so we went in the field one day more so I could know you. I didn't, I don't, yeah. you probably didn't get a lot out of it. Remember when the guy ate, used a spoon? He was taking paint yeah. and yep. putting it in a thing and then put it in the cereal and ate yep. the Same cereal. Spoon. I was like, wow. That's <laughs> Thank God there's no question yeah. on the application that says, do you eat paint right. while you're eating cereal? Yep. And, um, but what was, what's neat is, and now Mike works here. Mike, they get paid very well. They work really hard to support you guys. Um, you know, we're upwards of, we'll finish two twenty two hundred thirty million $30 million this year paid much. Mike. Yeah. We, we, we should be at two fifty, but we're going to keep, we're going to keep cranking. We're going to, we think we can double that life volume in a year from a yeah. hundred to 200 million and paid. Um, but you know, I look at, I was saying this to somebody the other day, we change client. We, we literally, you get in your car with your leads and you will change somebody's life. You're not a zero factor. You're either going to do something that's going to protect them when there's a death. And if it's final expense, the policies last forever. So there's going to be a death. Or it's mortgage section where you're going to protect them if there's a death and or give them their money back. You are not indifferent ever, like as far as your inf- your impact on people. You're going to have a positive effect. If you didn't help them, that's a negative impact. It doesn't mean it's your fault. I'm just saying the people I didn't help, that was that was a negative interaction, right? I, I wish I had, there's probably, I'd ever wanted to look back and say things. I have worked really hard to just be direct and, and get people to understand their heart and the mind, why they needed it and remember why they actually fill it out or, Hey, here's why I'm here. Oh, that's why I'm here. Cause you, I get it guys. And really, really hammered out on that. But it's the same thing when you look at recruiting. Well, so when people go like, I'm just not good at sales. I'm just the worst recruiter in the history of recruiting. I'm like, <laughs> want to play? Right. No, like it's how I recruited him back. They're like, do you even know in your team? I'm like, I asked him once. I'm like, you gotta ask him again. I'm like, I'm not asking him again. I asked the dad once, kid wanted to play it. He called him back. I ain't asked nobody again. I'm not begging nobody. That was my issue. I was a terrible recruiter. But you know what I realized? It changes people's lives right. for the better. You got four kids, two biological, two you adopted. Yep. Nice house, big house, 
wife who doesn't work because you have four kids, and a mother-in-law who lives with you, right? Right. Okay. So could you have done any of that working as a carpenter? No. 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 Zero chance. Doesn't mean that, but I'm saying in his position, there's zero chance. And now for us, we're like, man, he's killing the field. We used to come do this. I'm like, I need somebody to help like run the company, but I need, I need your help. And there's so much, but I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm so proud of what you've done for your kids. The kids that you adopted, dude, that's game changing, life changing stuff, man. And we're going to do, we just taped a business development meeting training. Yep. So you're going to see, I take half an hour or so explain what it is that we do. So it's not for you to send to people to write, try to recruit them because it's a training for you. People go, well, I didn't do it right. How could you do it wrong? If you talk about comp, renewals, no contract, leads, training, overrides as it pertains to our business and bonuses. Building the business where you go like, and this guy, Mike Kilomet, this lady had, I mean, you give them the, because they, we all think it takes 27,000 people to issue a million dollars. Well, we got 7,000 and we're going to issue 220 million. So talk about that. Talk about how your money keeps, how he keeps growing, how you keep building business. If you do that and you share why you got into it and what you've gotten out of it, you win. You're not wrong. Just be you. You know, it's one of those things where I'm a big fan. You've heard me. I'm a big fan of fighting with your family, that WWE movie. Have you seen that? No. Pretty huge. You have to see it. It's based on a true story. Anyway. In the story, this young lady who's from Norwich, England, yep. her and her brother apply to get in, whatever. They're doing. And she's very different than the divas. So they pick her, right? She makes it all the way through. And she's nervous about going on live, which you can't blame her. Like, it's live TV. Live don't leave you a lot of room. Right. You know? So, you know, being live, sitting down in the seat and doing a podcast, not much to brag about being one take. Going out in front of 75,000 people and doing all, all these athletic things. Anyway, in, in The Rock's in the movie, and I think, I don't know if I'm, it's off of the true story, so how much of it he was involved in or not. But when he met them, they're wearing him out. Yeah. And they're like, well, Mr. Rock, Mr. Rock, Mr. Rock. He's like, and he's being really nice. He's like, God. And so she's like, can I have some more advice? He goes, just be the best you, you can be. So he leaves. So when she's going for a first live performance, her, her brother FaceTimes her. He's like, hey, you ready? She's like, no, I'm terrified. What if I forget my law? The whole deal. And he says, remember what The the Rock said? Just be the best you can be. And she says, they're from England. Bullocks to The Rock. That's a tweet. <laughs> That's not advice, Zach. And he goes, she says, Rock, The Rock isn't some freak from Norwich, England. And he goes, but that's what, he goes, but that's who you are, you know? <laughs> and uh, she's, he goes, just be you. Just be you. And and it's really, you got to watch me. I want to, I'm just not much, it's a great movie. Um, because there's a lot of emotion to it and there's a lot of, you know, never give up. And it's, it's just, I like it. So business. Um, so weekly business development means we had a guy in the other day, group in Gavin's group. We do them monthly. We do them weekly. Right. If you're doing monthly, you're wrong. We do them weekly. Why do we do them weekly? Because there's so many people out there like Mike was and his wife. They're smart. They're hard workers. They're good people. And they deserve a better chance. And the reality is if we take a step back and think, what if we had not met? It's not that you did the work. What if you had not been introduced to a different industry, not having an education after high school, you might have just succumbed to the fact that I, this is what I do the rest of my life. Right. I don't, I can't do anything else. A gentleman might not even be here. Your youngest one might not be here. No. Maybe not even Carmela. Maybe you and Christina have been like, we can't afford it. Maybe you would have had one child and been so stressed out financially, you didn't have one. Right. And then you might not have been able to adopt the boys. No, definitely not. That's like generational stuff. And so we're going to hire everybody because we do it better. I'm not afraid to talk about it because we do do it better. I will discuss that and debate that with anybody because all the stuff we talk about, comp, renewals, no contract, you making more money, you keep more money, you being trained appropriately, you understand how to be presumptive. Nobody does that better. It's because the people we have, we have awesome, awesome people working really hard to help awesome people, middle American market protecting them. So we have Rochelle, who I think started as an admin with Paul. I believe so. Now is an agent who is great story. Paul brags about her all the time. Then Sasha decided she's going to fly out to a convention. She comes to us. She comes to me, hey, I want to, uh, there's a convention in Vegas about leads. I want to learn more. Okay. I know it'll be a lot more work and I'm not even worried about like what I get paid time. I just want to go out there. I, I just, I know it's a lot of travel. I want to go out there and help the, I want to learn. And she's learned a ton. We're going to start implementing some of those. Then she goes to Andrew Taylor's office. So Andrew interviewed her and Brittany Smart about leads and about some other stuff when they were right. in Vegas. This, we got this idea from Andrew, the podcast room. Yeah. Studio. 
So, okay, so yeah. um, yep. just, so, just so you know, we gotta give you kudos, Andrew, but come to ours. We have a lot more stuff in here. We're not saying we're better, but we think it's great. It's so not, it's definitely better. Okay. Mike says it's better, but Hey, on a serious note, thank you for what you do. The fourth quarter is always the best quarter in, in insurance. Finish strong. I'm going to turn over to all these guys and girls. Thank you very much. Have an outstanding weekend guys. And here you go. Rochelle. <laughs> I work with Family First Life West Coast here in California, where Paul McLean is my upline. Uh, before I get started, I want to say a special thank you to Sean Mike and everybody here at Family First Life who has really paved the way for agents like myself to hit the ground running and be successful. And for that, I'm truly blessed to be a part of Family First Life, and I really can't wait to see what the future holds here. Um, before Family First Life, I was a stay-at-home mom of three, turned divorce a single mom of three, and working that nine to five and barely getting by. Um, last year, I had barely put $15,000 into my bank account collectively throughout the year, and I uh, have been a part of Family First Life for just hit seven months, and to date I've had $103,000 issue paid and put into my bank account. And it takes a minute to like really set that back. But the fact is, is it wasn't given, it was earned. And the fact that what I put into it, I got out of it. Working that nine to five mindset and it didn't matter what you did. It didn't matter how much money you made the employer or what you had done the day before, or what little action or big action you have taken, you're still gonna make that mediocre, that mediocre finances. Which to some of us, it's fine. I mean, make a little bit of money, but to me that wasn't good enough because I was tired of my kids doing without. I was tired of, the truth be said, I didn't have a Christmas for my kids. We didn't have the money. More often than not, my kids went without. And the greatest blessing behind it is they remained grateful for what they had, which was another big encouragement of why Family First Life was just a calling to my family. And what I needed to do to be successful, not only for them, but for their future. So, um, when you get involved, whether you're licensed or not, because mind you, I have no sales experience, I have no experience in insurance whatsoever, the biggest tip is listen. Because these men and women have really paved the way for us to be successful. And they've gone through the hurdles and they've told you what to do, buy the leads, buy the leads, be successful, you sit with clients. Don't buy the leads, you're not gonna sit with clients, you're not gonna be successful. Start a team, have people to grow underneath you and build an agency. Don't do it. Don't grow an agency. Don't be successful and don't lead the way. I mean, there's really two options here. It's whichever one you want to choose. And that's the best thing about family first life and how you change your mindset. Because I, I don't know about you, but I'm competitive and I ultimately want myself to win, but I want my team to win as well. And that's not going to happen if I don't put it in the right posture. Do I want to win? Do I want to be successful? Do I want those around me to win? And the truth is, yeah, because who doesn't? Because if they win, I win too, which means we all win, right? So um, when you wake up in the morning, your mindset should be of a business person's. And that's really what the biggest change has to be. Do you wake up and are you watching TV or are you reading a book? Are you calling your upline or are you calling your cousin? Are you calling your friends? Are you calling agents to get them on board or are you going to Starbucks and hanging out? Making the difference because you're no longer a nine to five. You're 24 seven and that 24 seven is well worth a sacrifice. Given myself an example, going from $15,000 in a given year to actually paying over $100,000 in seven months, going from having my car repossessed as I dialed here in my first month. Yes, repossessed, not shamed because six weeks later, I was able to put $7,000 down on a new car for both my kids and myself. So, I mean, there's the sacrifices that you're gonna have to make in order to get you from where you were or where you are now to where you wanna be. And what is it? Is it your social circle? What's your social circle consist of? Are you hanging out and doing things that you shouldn't be doing? Or are you hanging out with the right people, being influenced by the right books, listening to the right audio, calling the right people? I mean, Ultimately, this is this is family first life and I, I it's not said lightly I've reached out to people I've never met before and they've aided me with the best of advice and it's really been fruitful to my business and That being said it's been done to me Which I'm very humbled by because in such amount of such a short amount of time and having influence is nothing shy of a blessing so What are you doing? 
Because ultimately, and that's another thing why I love this business is because if you're successful, it's because you did it. Nobody else is going to hold your hand and make you dial the phone. They're not going to purchase your leads. Well, I mean, you we get lead assistance, and that's true. Some agents. Um, they're not going to make you sit in front of your clients. They're not going to make you call your upline in the home, which is a big thing. Always call your upline if you're not sure. Or call a new agent hotline or something. Reach out to somebody. Post on Facebook something. If you're not on the right calls, if you're not training, not listening to audio, then these are choices you have made to be a failure. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, these are choices we made. Or you're going to choose to call, get on the calls, listen to the training, get on the podcast, track your dials, hire people, and grow your business. And that's the best thing about Family First Life is because you're accountable for your actions. And everybody likes it. Everybody likes the fact that they have some accountability factor and it's having the recognition behind it. And for us, it isn't like some plaque on a wall that nobody really watches it, looks at on the way to the bathroom at a nine to five. This is financial growth in your bank account. This is your family not doing without. This is an example, my family rationing milk and my kids not having anything to us now eating and doing what we please just by doing what was supposed to be done. You listen. You get on the calls, you associate with the right people. You're not out late, you're not waking up late, you go to bed at a decent hour, you wake up, you read a book, you put down the TV remote. And if you can't put down the TV remote, disconnect it. Disconnect it, it'll save you money too, put that towards your lead purchase, seriously. That's what I did, I mean, it, these are just tips that I've done, take it or leave it, but I mean, putting yourself in the position where you wanna succeed is gonna be the best thing for you. And you're going to have to sacrifice it because ultimately is sacrifice a regret. You're going to make sacrifices now, such as short vacations, time off with the family. Yes, time off with the family. You're going to miss parties. You're going to miss um, TV shows and you're going to lose some sleep. You're going to sacrifice that now or you're, you're going to regret it in the future. You're going to regret the fact that you didn't make those sacrifices here to get to where you are now. It's the truth, let it sink in a second. Because if you don't do these things, you're not gonna grow as a business owner, as a person, and you're still gonna remain stagnant in your, in your situation. And nobody wants that because we all want growth, we all desire for a bigger and a greater purpose. It's just not a lot of us are willing to sacrifice to do what we need to do to get there. So what are the sacrifices that you need to make? And for me, it was TV. Shut it off, didn't have it anymore. And within doing that, I honed in, got plugged in my business, put down the TV, read a book. And the biggest differences are the smallest things, whether you realize it or not. Who are you influenced by? If they're not giving you a positive word, should you be having that conversation with them? Put them on timeout. It works, trust me. Hey bro, need a timeout. It works every time. So going from the nine to five, barely getting by, not being able to see your kids, not being able to do the things the way you wanted to because you're on their time, to growing your business and being able to do the things you want to do on your time while your business is growing and waking up every morning and having money coming into your account. Take a pick. Sacrifice or regret. Sacrifice the things that you are barely getting by with now or regret the fact that you didn't, you didn't do it sooner. That's seriously what it boils down to, everybody. Um... I hope anything that what I said helps. I really look forward to the growth within Family First Life and everything that is given to me here and my family and everybody I've met and been encompassed in my life. I'm truly blessed to be a part of this company and I cannot wait to grow with you. Um, have a good day. Hey everybody, um, I'm sitting here in Las Vegas. We had Sasha Alba, head of the lead department who's helped out thousands of agents and she was here planning the national convention for 2020 with family first life um, and i also had Brittany smart in the office and sasha gets most of the feedback when it comes to agents and what leads they like and what they're doing and Brittany's a hall of fame producer this year you're gonna have hall of fame right yes and she's really good at working specific types of leads. So what we did is we were comparing, hey, let's go over a lead type and really explain in depth exactly how it works, which is like, what does it look like when the client gets it? What is the agency when they get it? And what does it look like to sell it? So Sasha had mentioned, everyone loves the call-in leads right now, the mail pro call-in leads. We're gonna go through the costs, how they work, everything, how to order them, 
uh, what they look like when the client gets them and what they look like when they come in. Now, we were comparing all these different lead types. Then we started comparing chicken sandwiches because all over the internet we had um, Popeyes and Chick-fil-A, like all, they were all fighting and then we looked it up and there's actually Popeyes chicken sandwiches on eBay right now for $10,000 a piece and people are 25 bids. We're like, well, that's crazy. Now, we went because we wanted to test and see if we liked them or not and Popeyes is out of chicken sandwiches so we were not able to do the test, but what do you guys think's better if you were guessing? Chick-fil-A or Popeyes? Probably Chick-fil-A. I say Chick-fil-A. I don't know. I think Popeyes probably has some seasoning in there that they put in. It's just probably good. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let you guys know when we find out. Now, um, to start with, we wanted to pull up what the lead looks like. So we have here, uh, basically, this is what the client gets in the mail. So if you... If you're using call-in leads, the client gets in the mail something like this and it says, you, you've you recently closed on this mortgage. We need you to call us about important information about the loan you got. They fill out, they the, it has a phone number for them to fill out. And when they fill it out, they call in and Sasha, maybe you can tell them what happens when they call in. Sure, so once they call into that 1-800 phone number, they're going to be prompted to give the mortgage authentication phrase, which is usually a random three word combination. And once they give that three word phrase, it'll prompt them through a series of questions, uh, confirming their lender, their loan amount, uh, their address, and all throughout uh, the series of questions, depending on how long the phone call lasts and how long that person stays on the line will determine the cost per lead. So uh, in the beginning, it's just confirming information that we already know about them. And towards the end of the call, it's going to ask them information that we don't yet know. So their date of birth and additional phone numbers uh, that they didn't call from. So we have another way to get a hold of them. So the client usually gets this in the mail and then it's usually pink, right? Mm -hmm. So the, I've seen green ones too. So different colors rotate. Mm -hmm. They get this, they call the number and then we're going to pull up what it looks like when you get the lead. So there's two different leads here. We have the $5 silver lead and the $35 uh, gold lead. Now we kind of circled and, and blocked out client information and then we circled the differences on each lead type. So what Sasha, what you were talking about is if they go all the way through the prompts when they call in and they answer all the questions, then they get the gold lead. Correct. which is $35. If the person doesn't finish all the prompts and all the questions, then they get the silver lead. Now, do you know what it says when they call when that when they call that number, do you know what it says? Uh the client calls the phone number and it will walk them through what mortgage protection is. So they'll uh be essentially led through or or they'll listen to the same information that would be on a lead. So death, disability, return of premium, um, anything that you would see on, on a regular full card is what's going to be read off to them when they call in. And if they answer all the questions, does it say someone's going to be following up with you at the end? Yes. Okay. Now, there is a there is a code word on there. It's usually a weird word, right? It's like purple, blue, fish. Like muffin, garbage, yeah. orange. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> muffin, garbage, orange. All right. So, Britt, do you ever use that code word? Because it seems like something they would remember. Do you ever use that when you call these I leads? I honestly never have to. And it, they're so crazy on there. Like, sometimes the words are so obscure. But I, I never have. I've never had to. You've never had they, to. They always remember. Because as soon as you say, you know, you received a postcard in the mail, it was pink or green, and they say, oh, yeah, I did that. I want the information. That's all you say? Yeah. Now, when you get this in your CRM, do you follow this phone script on here or do you just use a different one? Um, yeah, I follow like the, the first part of it pretty much. Um, like pretty much the first part of it I follow where I say, Hey Andrew, this is Brittany. I'm giving you a call, a call about the postcard you received in the mail regarding your mortgage for maybe one, two, three main street. 
Um, you called the number and verified your contact information. I'm the underwriter that's following up with you. I'm going to be in your area tomorrow to get you that information. It takes me 10 to 15 minutes. So it's literally like I use a piece of that, most of it, and then it's the same script for regular mortgage protection. What if it's a silver lead and they didn't go all the way through? Is it different for you? Um, I call it anyway as they're all the same. You just call yeah. it? Do you ever call it like it's just a regular lead that they filled out? Yeah, pretty much is what that's what I do. The reason being is because I've sat in so many homes and actually um, I took a picture of this, Andrew. I was going to post it on Facebook the other day. I sat with a woman that had um, returned a or called in from a call in lead. And then she said, oh, is this you? Is this your company as well? And it was like a regular mailer. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'll take those. So I literally took a picture of it side by side and most of these, I would say a good like 60% or 50% of these people who request information from call in leads actually fill out the postcards as well. So it's the same lead. Same. Yeah. So you're getting the same person, yeah, right? It's just that, you know, you're getting it for a less expensive price also. Yeah. Five or $35. Yeah. So what was, what was explained to me was if you pretend like they just did fill out a form, they probably just did fill out a form, yep. right? So you call it like nothing. And this was a crazy tip that someone said the other day. They go, I always say you or your wife called in and filled this out if, if there's two people on there. Mm -hmm. Or even not, you or someone else in the household called in. And that way, even if they don't remember, they're like, well, maybe my wife or maybe somebody else did. They throw that in the intro. Mm -hmm. And then I think we could use, you know how on Facebook leads, people use the code word like, Hey, it says here, your favorite vacation is the Bahamas and people re that triggers them to remember. I think it could be even more of a solid appointment. If you said you gave the code word of, uh, orange muffin, yellow. Yeah. Kite. <laughs> yeah. Orange muffin, yellow kite or whatever the code word is. The, is the, the code <laughs> phrase is yeah. cause they're crazy words. And they're probably, th they're saying that into the phone when they call it that's, says like, whatever, balloon, pig, nipple or whatever. Try that you know? this week. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so that's how that works. Now, when you get there, is it any different when you go through the presentation? Never, never. And actually when I set my schedule, I don't put on there like mortgage call and lead BPL, like whatever. I don't ever like you don't prejudge. I don't distinguish between the two of those because it like will screw me up. And what I'm pleasantly like, I don't know. It's just, um, I mean, Sasha, I emailed Sasha back. I think I looked at my emails and I emailed her about these like last, I don't know, October maybe or something like, I don't know if I was one of the first people to jump on, but I, I've had them ever since for Clark County. I've never let him go. And it never fails. Like my BPL will slow down like right now for the last two months, three months. It's been very slow where I'm getting like two or three a week from arm. If I didn't have call on leads, I would not have any mortgage protection at all. I would be selling all final. And leads. how much do you think you sell a week off of them? Um, I probably like, I don't know, maybe like three to 5,000. And how much do you think you spend? Probably like it's, it varies because I get a good mix of silver and then gold. So I don't know, some weeks, maybe two to 500, two to 400 a week, maybe two to four in a week maybe. and you write three to five. Do you ever have a week where you go, man, these aren't working out? Um, not when I go through the numbers, No. like I will have days of seven or eight call and leads. Do you even care if it's a gold or silver? No, never. The more I can get, the better because it's just all about running the numbers. Like, as we know, it's the same thing with like final expense, right? We buy 30 leads from a vendor and we have one bad batch and we're like, these don't work. Yeah. Like what yeah. happened to these? You know, it's just like you run through the numbers and you run through them enough. And like, I have so many awesome success stories that I could tell you guys all day that I have from calling leads. And sometimes you're, you're skeptical, you know, sometimes because you see it all over the internet. But like, I really like want to tell people just try not to distinguish too much between the gold and the silver, because I promise you from somebody that's work, been working them a long time, like they're not that much different. They're really not. It's just the way that you treat it in your mind. And when you call them. All right, Sasha, I always like to talk about this now because there's so many new agents coming on board with lead credits. Uh, my understanding, there's no lead credit because they called in, it captures their phone number. They know they called in, they have the information. Uh, 
have you seen them approve any lead credits or anything like that? Not to date. So don't ask if you're a new agent. If you do decide to get on this program, don't ask for lead credits. Correct. Now, this is something big with direct mail that I want, I would love for you to explain. If somebody orders these and then they stop their order, what happens and what should people be prepared for? Sure. So um, I think similarly to how quickly these leads ramp up in their turnaround time, which is much shorter than a, a, a traditional direct mail, where you're sending a card out, waiting for someone to fill it out and send it back to you, these leads turn around quicker. And I always tell anyone who talks to me is that we currently live in a generation of instant gratification. So if I get a postcard in the mail and I call somewhere and they call me back the same day, I feel like I've resolved, you know, whatever inquiry I might've had. Um, so, uh, yeah. So getting the leads quicker means that they'll also stop after you request to cancel them quicker. Uh, but that's still three to six weeks before you see them slow down. So I think that's very, uh, that's fair, first of all, because it is direct mail. Everything is a couple of weeks behind whenever you send it out. Um, we have to give some time for people to actually, you know, get to their mail and, and call us back. Uh, but you have to be ready for that period of time after you request to cancel that you're still going to be locked into buying those leads. And the reason is, is because the money was already paid to mail that, right. that mail, right? Yeah. And then the agent doesn't have to pay until the lead comes in, Correct. which is a really good program for agents because they don't have to go, let's just mail as much as possible and hope something comes back. Right. So on the flip side though, if a, if any lead vendor, if they're doing a buy per lead plan in mailers, you have to take whatever comes in after they've stopped mailing. Right. And I think a lot of new agents, I'm, they might not, that might not be communicated to them because I see them switch around a lot. Right. And then it's, it's like, hey, th this is the way it works. It's the way it is. Um, now, I've always wanted as, much, as many leads as possible because I wanted to trick myself into working. If I had m leads coming in automatically, that was a good thing for me because then I would go work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a lot of leads, I wouldn't have anything to lose. I wouldn't want to work. Yep. So it's like, if you get these leads on auto order and they're just flying in. Now, what's the availability nationwide on this? It's pretty much wide open. It's wide open. Yeah, absolutely. We can fit multiple agents into counties. How does that work? Uh, so the system is set up to run on a round robin, meaning I could get leads in the same area that Brittany's getting leads in the same area that Andrew's getting leads and none of us would run into each other. So it'll deliver in the sequence of, you know, however we signed up, one will come to me, to Brittany, to yourself. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I can actually attest to that. Whatever Sasha's saying is 100% true because Brittany Hall and I both have call-in leads for Clark County and we never run into the same client. Yeah, you're just, it's just round robining yeah. what... Yeah. people what comes in yeah. and you got and that's what's cool too so a normal traditional mortgage protection plan usually only one agent per county because of availability right? right per bpl program mm -hmm. here what imagine la how many agents can be on a round robin system in la or other big areas yeah. and you can put three or four agents in the other thing is is if an, if an agent wants out, it can just make more leads for the people that are still in. Right. So I really love that. And it's, it, it allows people to move counties faster too, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, Sasha, so the availability is there. How does somebody find out what's available and how long does it take? Sure. So um, Call and Leads is a program that we have availability um in terms of like quantities that you can expect readily available. Um, and by we, I mean that I can communicate the information or you can even uh, submit an inquiry to support at mailproleads.com. I highly recommend that you submit your own inquiry just so you're not waiting around for me. Um, just submit your inquiry over to that email address and they'll get back to you with uh, quantities that you can expect in the county or group of counties that you're looking at. Is this an exclusive plan for FFL? Yes. So they'll check and make sure. And do, do you have to, why does somebody have to have their manager or VP sign off? So what I see happen a lot of times is, uh, especially on a brand new agent's order, 
uh, their bank is not anticipating that charge. So I typically tell people when I'm sending them a billing agreement uh, to call your bank and let them know that, you know, uh, this vendor is going to be charging your card and that it's okay. Uh, so, but typically they don't because um, you're, you're busy. I get that. Uh, so the first couple of charges that come through the bank will flag it as fraud because they've never seen it before. And that's not where the agent lives for the most part. Um, so somebody has to pay for those leads because, again, like you said before, the mail the has money went been out. paid for. Um, so the leads need to be paid for every day. Um, on top of that, your manager knows best your personal situation, whereas I'm not able to know the story of thousands of you behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so you could talk a really strong game of I want 600 leads a month and I can but you can't handle it, it. And you cannot handle it so your manager has to be that line of defense to say no they may have said this to you but that's not the real story and it's like having good credit on absolutely yeah. yeah somebody has to vouch for you now for me I, I always tell people you know how many times I've ever let a bill roll up to the person that hired me zero ever like I would I would probably Early on in the business, I probably would have sold my car before I let leads roll up. That was just like completely not even an option for me. Right. And I think that it, it also allowed people to invest in me and go, okay, this guy's going to do everything right. Like Sean Mike has helped me a lot throughout my career. If I'm constantly ordering things that I can't take, is he going to want to invest in me or trust that I can handle stuff? No. Who wants to roll up the lead bill to Sean? Not me. <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> I'd like to meet the person that, that ever did that. <laughs> not here anymore. <laughs> All right. So, um, but yeah, that's just the, I love being able to tell people exactly the way it works, you know? This is the good and the bad of the program. I see way more good because the amount of people that you can see. Um, can you tell us a couple stories that you've uh, run into when you have a week and you run into a call in silver or a call in gold lead? Do you have any? Yeah. I mean, I'll pull up my calendar for you guys right now. Um, let's see. So just um, Monday, call in one, two, three. I know I had four booked. Um, like, I'm not even kidding you. I guess I, I could pull up my bills. Like you could see my, what's on the schedule. Call in, call in, call in. Yeah. Like it's like, you know, um, it's part of my every weekly routine. So when I say that, I'm not just saying that, um, one of the, one of a success story I had recently though, this couple that I sat with that are originally from Washington, that's my home state. So we obviously had that commonality, but um, the husband was actually, when I booked the appointment, he like chewed me out. He was like really rude. And he was just like, he, he hung up on me. And then I texted him back and I said, can I please talk to somebody that's a little nicer than you? Like, how about your wife? And he goes, cause he, cause over the phone, he's like, I don't freaking know if I did that. Like you should talk to my wife. And then he hung up. So I texted him back. So I got his wife's number. She was super nice. <laughs> we booked the appointment and I show up and they're like super, super nice. I sold I th um, about 380 per month in that house. And then the next week I went on a Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. And I helped out her sister. Like it was like another one. And that was a call in lead. Call in lead. Yep. And then another 130 a month. So 6,000 AP. Yep. Was it a silver? Honestly, I don't know. Guys. Uh, Cause you don't check. I swear. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. So that was a really awesome story. Um, there was, and then even after that, I actually saw this guy who I couldn't help because he had a ton of health conditions and he actually filled out a final expense mailer and someone from another insurance company, not ours, was there like um, just a couple days before me and helped him with AIG. Um, I still tried to see if he could qualify for anything else, but he couldn't. But like he was there ready to buy insurance, guys. Like he's like, oh, I already have my final expense insurance taken care of. Now I want this mortgage protection. How about when you get one right. and they go, oh, I just filled out that mailer. And it wasn't your mailer, but you called them first I'm like, That's me. because they call in so fast, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to go back through the mail. Yeah. So they call in so fast. So when, when I was working, these people would say, Hey, I would call them and I'd go, Hey, I'm calling you about this request for mortgage protection. They'd go, yeah, I just filled it out. So they were filling one out and they called in. Mm -hmm. And then I'd get to the appointment. And while I'm in the appointment, somebody else would call and go, Hey, I'm calling about this request and they'd go, Oh, I'm, I, I'm already taken care of. Somebody's already here. 
You know what I do like about that is that most of the people that I sit with, like for mortgage protection, whether it's this or another vendor, um, they all say we received like a boatload of mail, so many mailers, and they, they send like maybe four and five back sometimes. But I do like with the call-in leads that typically if I sit with someone, it's no one from FFL that has been there. So I don't mind replacing business if it's if I have something better. If you're putting them in a good situation. That's what I'm saying. If it's something better, you know, always. Or just being able to help him help them put them in a better situation, like versus, you know, like if if you know, because like Teresa and I work in the same area, right? So we we overlap clients. But if it's from a call-in lead, I typically don't see that like at all. I don't see agents. Do you think it could be in an agent's head if a lead's good or bad? I do because I have been guilty of that too, like past experiences. Yeah. So you think it's bad, you go in there thinking it's bad, your attitude's different, so it's bad, or you think it's good, you go in there smiling, and then automatically it, the chain of events changes based off of that? Yeah, and, and it all can change with just a good day in the field, one one success story, and then your whole attitude changes. And um, I actually, if we're being really real, like I remember emailing Sasha last year. So I was like, <laughs> Sasha, I don't want these anymore. It was like early on. And she's like, okay, Brittany, well, it's going to take a little while. So I was like, okay, fine. Let's just keep them on. And then after that, I never, I never. It just took one to change your mind, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think, it, you know, it was just kind of, I was nervous for some reason. And Yeah. So my business changed when I started working at Family First Life and Sean Mike started saying, because I, I, I was really picky with leads when I first started here. And he goes, dude, I would run final expense. I would run anything. And what changed for me in my business was when he goes, dude, the lead is just to get you in the door to, for someone that wants to talk about insurance. And then I was like, whoa, it doesn't matter what it says. Because if they're open to discussing insurance and the good products we have with the return of premium, then we can help them. So if I could get in their door and they're open to talking about any type of insurance, then I, can't, I, I don't care what the lead is from. I don't care what type of lead it is as long as I'm sitting down with people. And then I, came, I started telling people when I would get in the home, I go, hey, so insurance has changed. It's kind of like phones. Do you remember when you had, what type of phone did you have like 10 years ago? Motorola flip phone. Yeah, the Razor, right? Yeah. Probably. Okay, what type of phone did you have before that? Probably didn't have the Nokia one. Well, well, my parent, like my parents had the Nokia one and they had this game snake on it that you could do, you know? And it was like the coolest thing ever. I just love playing snake and like trying whatever. Now I tell them, so insurance evolves. So now there's a lot of options that are way better. And it's kind of like iPhones. What does an iPhone do compared to your flip phone, Motorola razor? So much more like and is it that much more expensive per month to have that service? No. Not really, right? If you take inflation and whatever. So what I tell people is I say companies get more competitive. So my job here today is just to show you the iPhone compared to the, the Nokia whatever satellite phone that you used to have. You know, but I, and it's true though. I'm not lying. Like return a premium and all these things. If you just get in the door with anybody and they're open for that discussion, at all, then you're going to come out with 350 a month. You're going to come out with 150 a month. It's going to be nuts. I mean, I'm definitely listening to you because you've sold over 400,000 multiple years in a row. So, and I'm not good at sales. So that's the scary <laughs> part. That, <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just a numbers guy. I go through a lot of numbers, find the people that appreciate me being there, try to help out the ones that, you know, are being mean to me if I can stick through that but it's a big numbers game. And you know, one thing, do you ever have like a slump? Yeah. How often? I don't like what, I don't know, define slump. Like you, you seems like you're getting more no sales or no shows than normal. Oh, like at least probably once a month or something. All right. So I always got now you, that doesn't mean you're you have a bad week cause you just work harder. Right? right. So it doesn't mean you get to take the week off. Right. But it does mean that you might have to do extra door knocks, run extra appointments, run on Sunday, whatever. So every month I would have one bad week where it would be like a dog fight. And I'd have one good week where it'd be too good to be true. Then I'd have two just normal weeks. 
So the week that I was in dogfight, every single week, everyone was telling me no. And my goal was to see a whole bunch of people until I got a lay down. Once I got that lay down, it would fix my brain to where I would break that slump and it was over. Mm -hmm. So my whole goal there was volume to see as many people as possible until that slump was over. And I know it's all in my head. It's got to be right. Yeah. There's no reason you can have so many sales in a row and then so many no sales in a row if it wasn't in your head and the way that you're communicating with people. That's why it's important to stay like this, right? And not like exactly. This. All right. Um, you get in the home. It's a normal lead, just like nothing. Nothing changes. Do you have any tips for in home when it comes to call in leads? Work them like a mortgage protection lead. Because it is. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. And you can go through volume. Don't get upset if you have a bad experience. Yeah. Um, what, the thing is, is that like the difference. So did we talk about, did, Sasha, you talked about the difference between the $5 and the $35. I mean, you know, it's like they go halfway through. But a lot of times you you realize that like, um, who's really good at this? So Zach Waffles, right? Um, if you guys have watched his live dial, it's like popcorn watching a movie. <laughs> He's hilarious. But one of the things he says is if you're like, he says, if you're like me, um, I hang up too. Or like he says, like he, he crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, cause like people are impatient and they just don't want to go through the prompt. So that doesn't mean that they, it was a mistake or that they don't want it. It's literally like the, it's like when you call in somewhere and you're like, I don't want to give all my information. I don't want to wait on the phone. So you hang up, but they got it. They went to the phone to, to pick up the phone to request information. So that they're interested. Got it. Cool. Any other tips on orders? Um, anything for agents? Yeah, don't wait. Order now. Cool. All right, guys. FFL, thank you for having us on. Um, it's, a, it's an honor being in business with a company that's exploding. And if you are smart, you're going to book your room for the national conference in 2020. And I'm going to tell you guys why. Last year, a lot of people waited for the conference. And... You know what Las Vegas did right before the event happened? Ran out of rooms. No, they had it just so happened there was something exciting happening. So they changed the room price to like one of the nights was like $900 a night, right? So right now you can go to ffltakeover.com. You can book your you can reserve a ticket and you can also book your room and I think it's like Fifty to a hundred dollars per night. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you do it now, now you don't even have to pay. You just have to say you're going. And how, how much was the conference again? I don't know. No, <laughs> for the agent. For, oh, the agent. for the agent. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for the agent, it's uh, free. So really for the company, she said she can't count that high. For the agent, <laughs> it doesn't cost you any money to register. It's free. Now the other thing is. The registration, though, I think is important because the last few, the, this year, I think there's been, do you know how many contracted agents FFL has had this year? No, it's it, so high. It's so high. Like yeah. it's upwards of like 15,000 people. Now there's millions of agents, so that's not a huge deal, mm -hmm. but th that, that ballroom is, I think is going to be packed. And last year we had to have an overflow room. And the overflow room was for the people that didn't register on time. They registered late, so they got an overflow ticket. I don't want to sit in an overflow room if I'm going to go to a conference and watch on a monitor. Now I would do it if I had to, but I'd rather be smart and for free go on and book my ticket and be prepared. The other thing I would do is I would have my team and the people that I work with do that right away. What I've seen is Family First Life's conferences, because they're so real, there's no rah-rah, it's not a bunch of fluff, it's not saying you're gonna be a millionaire, no one's showing off their Lamborghinis that they bought, even though a lot of them have become millionaires with FFL, a lot of people have. They're not going, hey, look at me. What they're doing is they're saying, hey, this is how we're gonna help people, this is how we're gonna train, this is how we're gonna recruit, this is what we say, and what I've seen is agents that go to these events come out and they make a lot of money. I've had people that have done nothing for six months. 
they go to one of these events and they become a VP within the next, Grady Paulson, for example, he's been with us all a year and a couple months. He's almost at the 140 contract. He was actually with us a year before that, but he kind of just thought it was like a hobby type of thing. You know what he did? Nothing. I put him in the Facebook group page. He watched everybody one day. He goes, hey, I'm going to go to this event. Went to the event. He goes, hey, I'm going to become VP. Now he hit VP and almost a 140 contract. So he's going to be at making 140% of commissions, which is insane. Awesome. And he's just getting started. So get your people registered. FFLtakeover.com. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody there. And again, thanks FFL for having us on. Mm -hmm.